so uh, who am I? Uh, I'm David Morosimard. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. I'm part of the RDO team. So the RDO team at Red Hat is involved in essentially empowering the community to um, build a, a package distribution for Red Hat-based distributions. So we have Ubuntu Cloud Archive for the Ubuntu world, and we have RDO for the rest of the Red Hat distributions. Right. So before joining Red Hat uh, last September, uh, I was at iWeb and Internet, uh, where, I'm, where I stayed almost 10 years. Um, and the past couple of years, I helped them uh, develop, uh, deploy, uh, operate, and support uh, their multiple public cloud regions. So um, today, what we're going to talk about is uh, first, uh, we'll chat about just how big OpenStack is today to give an idea of what testing all of this is about and why it's painfully hard. Um, we'll look at um, what the, the OpenStack community does to try and make sure that their, um, what they ship uh, works, mostly, and uh, so how they develop and submit and review and test their things. And then we'll dig into RDO, what's RDO about, how we package things, how we test things, and um, how we try and keep up with the uh, OpenStack trunk. Um, we have a lot of content to cover. Um, I'd like to have enough time to go through it, so if you have any questions, we'll keep that for the end. Um, so numbers. Um, so so, so why, why is testing OpenStack hard? It's because it's so big, right? Um, we have this thing called Stack Analytics. Stack Analytics is a tool that keeps track of different metrics uh, regarding the OpenStack project. So how many contributors, from what companies, uh, how many commits, patch set, reviews, and so on. And so according to Stack Analytics, um, there's more than 400 projects in the OpenStack ecosystem. So uh, of course, there's the, the big ones like Nova and Keystone, but there's also uh, a bunch of others, right? And, and so uh, of these more than 400 projects, um, for, there's around 50 of them that are part of what we call the Big Tent, which is governed by the OpenStack uh, Technical Committee. So these have uh, a formal process for re releasing stable releases and things like that. Um, for the Mitaka cycle, so for the cycle we're in right now, uh, there's already over 2,000 contributors that spans um, more than 100 companies. So it's just a matter of scale, right? There's so many people contributing to OpenStack. Um, every cycle, the OpenStack Foundation does a user survey uh, to try and figure out how people deploy, how people install, how people configure OpenStack, and what, kind, what technologies they use in their deployments. Um, what these surveys make obvious is that so many ways to this can go wrong. Uh, uh, so I mean, you, you can uh, the, the promise of OpenStack is that um, you can mix and match software technologies, hardware technologies, different vendors, different network appliances, different network attached storage, whatever, and it's going to just work, right? So OpenStack it, it attempts to abstract all the differences between the different technologies and drivers so that when you ask OpenStack to create a virtual machine, it's going to create a virtual machine no matter it's running Hyper-V or KVM or VMware, right? So that's the promise of OpenStack. Um, so uh, how, how do we make all of that work? Uh, th th this work begins upstream even before anything touches or lands in RDO. Um, so a typical project, y you'll find the source of OpenStack projects on GitHub. They're actually mirrored there because Open, the OpenStack Foundation has their own Git servers. Um, but what we see here is that uh, th there's no notion of pull requests, right? Y it's, it's not obvious, but sometimes you have people opening pull requests to Nova. And then you'll have Jenkins say, no, you can't do that. Um, so in fact, um, there, there's something called Garrett that is used for code review. And when a patch is successful, passes everything, all the tests, it's merged in the Git repos by Garrett. And so, 
Next slide. Oh. All right, so this is what a patch set in Garrett looks like. So the workflow looks a bit like this. You want to hack into Nova, not like hack Nova, but like develop a feature in Nova. So you clone the Git repository, you do your stuff, you commit, and then you send a review to Garrett. Um, so instead of a pull request, you send your code for a review. And then you'll, 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 you'll have your patch here in, in Garrett, so people can review the code uh, and, and vote on it. So is it pretty bad, minus two? Or this looks good, it should be ready to merge, plus two. So range in from minus two to plus two. And they can also see the diff of your patch, comment on it. So it's, it's really like a, it brings a sort of social aspect to, um, to, to, to code review. I'm having a problem with this. Okay. So, um, and I'll draw your attention to the, to the red box. So this is my friend Jenkins. And so when you, whenever you submit a patch set to Garrett, uh, there's going to be a batch of tests that essentially will, you know, it's CI, it's automated, and there were no humans hurt in the process of testing this patch. And so basically these tests, Jenkins will pull your patch. It will run a batch of tests like unit tests, uh, syntax tests, or integration tests. And if all of that is green, then the patch is good to go. If, the re if, you, have the, if you have the approval of the core reviewers on that project. Um, and so what this looks like, so we want to know, well, does the patch look nice? This is silly, right? But when you have over 2,000 contributors, the code has to look nice because it can't be messy, otherwise, you know, uh, becomes a mess, and you want to contribute to the code, and it's scary, and it's already scary, and it's clean, so you don't want it. You don't want it to be messy. So, so the OpenStack projects enforce guidelines. Uh, so your code has to fit within 80 columns, and I'm not going to swear, but those 80 columns sometimes they're they're painful. And so anyway, uh, and so we want to also know does the patch introduce regressions. So each project has unit and functional tests that are part of their project. So they, they, they're isolated tests within the project with things like OS tester and unit tests. But then also, we want to know, does the patch work with other things? And so basically, you submit a patch to Nova. Well, does this break any other project? So we have jobs that will uh, install and deploy OpenStack in a virtual machine with a dev stack. Um, and so basically, the, the, this virtual machine will be a fully working or broken OpenStack environment. Um, and we, uh, the job will run Tempest on it. And so Tempest is a testing framework for testing uh, OpenStack deployments. Um, an example of a, uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a bunch of uh, Tempest tests would be, for instance, to create an SSH key pair in Nova, um, upload an image in Glance, um, create the tenant networking setup, and um, uh, create a virtual machine with all of the previous that I just created, and then try to log on to the virtual machine. So if any of, the, of those tests have failed for any kind of reason, well, Tempest will just uh, say, well, this failed, and your patch is bad. Um, and so, uh, yeah, th th this, is, this is like uh, a high-level view overview of what OpenStack does upstream to try and make sure that their things work. Uh, this brings us to RDO. Um, what's RDO? We have no idea. <laughs> so... Um, the, the community manager, uh, he, he brought us these shirts in Tokyo at the, at the previous summit as a kind of a running gag, right? Because um, I don't know what RDO stands for, and I don't believe anyone really does. There's some level of consensus around RPM distribution of OpenStack. I think that kind of makes sense, uh, but there's otherwise this kind of running gag. So, but really, um, the, the truth is uh, RDO is a community project. Um, sure, it's kind of Red Hat provides resources because it has a vested interest in an RPM distribution of OpenStack working, right? So we're not going to hide that. Um, but really, it's, it's community effort. And what's special about this is that everything is upstream, right? So 
Everything is open source. You can see uh, the packaging spec files. They're on GitHub, and you can contribute to it. And you can see uh, the build logs that we have. You can see the CI that we have. Everything's public. There's nothing behind the, the firewall. And uh, in fact, we have contributors from uh, Myantis. We have contributors from the CERN, notably. Um, vendors also provide help packaging their different drivers, like Cisco or Big Switch. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's RDO. That's packaging OpenStack for RPM-based uh, distros. So packaging is at the core of what RDO is. Uh, let, let's look at what this looks like. Um, let's look at a typical project in um, OpenStack, Python Nova Client. So when you install um, a Python library, uh, either from source or from PyPy, for example, with pip, um, it will feed on something that's called a requirements file. So the, the, this file essentially is a way to express what are the requirements for this project, or dependencies, if you will. So if, if you install Python Nova Client, Python, Python setup tools would, will take care of you. Uh, take care of you? Yeah, sure, OK. Um, and, and, and install these dependencies for you so you don't have to bother to pick them uh, one by one. And so when, when, we, when we create a package for Python Nova Client, uh, we don't really have Python setup tools to magically uh, install these for us. So we have to, uh, in the RPM spec files, actually um, specify that, OK, this is a runtime dependency, this is a build time dependency. And, and so, I mean, uh, an RPM spec file it, it is, it's, it's more than that, because we have to, as a distribution, make some decisions. OK, so we take this configuration file and we send it to uh, ETC, uh, Nova, and you know things like that. But but really, the core of the spec file is to gather all of the, all of the Python dependencies together, um, because I mean, if you install Nova Client and you don't have um, I don't know you don't have Keystone auth, well you're not going to be able to authenticate against Keystone, and that's going to be a problem, right? And so um, how so we have those requirements, we have the spec files, so. How, how do we build the packages once we have these? This is done with something that's called DeLorean. Um, I like the picture, uh, but DeLorean in this context is not the car, uh, but it's fairly relevant. I'll get back to it later. Um, so DeLorean is what the RDO community uses to build the packages from the spec files and from the Git sources. Um, so DeLorean essentially keeps up. Uh, DeLorean will monitor um, upstream Git repos for new commits. So say there's a new commit in Python of a client. Uh, DeLorean will pick it up right away and try to build a package for it with the, specs with this, with the spec file it has. Um, and sometimes it, it doesn't work. I mean, that's the life of keeping up with the master branches is that it's going to break at some point in time, and there's nothing you can do about it. So for example, here, uh, we have a Barbican that failed to build. So a, pa a, a package can fail to build for any reason, really. Um, so in this case, for example, um, when looking at the build logs, uh, we saw, OK, so there's a new configuration file, uh, API audit map. and the spec file did not expect that config configuration file, so the build failed, and it's pretty obvious in this case why it failed. And so we needed to um, uh, patch our spec file to take account that configuration file. So that's an example of failure. Um, another example is, uh, for example, th this happened last week, I believe. Um, Neutron introduce a new dependency on a new, on a new uh, Neutron library. And so we picked up that commit, but we didn't have that library in the spec file. So we needed to add it. And thankfully, uh, we had uh, a Neutron developer contribute um, the packaging to us. Because um, it's hard to see here. It's green, right? So Python Neutron lib, we didn't have it last week. So some, someone packaged it for us. And so we, we could add it to the spec file. Because otherwise, we would, have, we would have needed to package the lib first and then add it to the spec file. 
Um, so De DeLorean um, not only builds new commits. Um, hang on, let me, can I? It's not wide enough. Uh, it's, okay, it's not too bad. Anyway, um, so DeLorean will, um, uh, so I told you that DeLorean builds uh, new commits every time there's one. So when it does that, not only does it build a new package, but it generates a new repository. And so the, 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 so if the, 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 the first layer of repositories, if you will, is Dolorean Current. And so Dolorean Current will contain essentially all the latest and the greatest of every OpenStack package. And it, it carries um, all of the previous packages as well. So for instance, if, um, if I'm building a new commit for Nova, uh, there's a new package for Nova that will be generated, and also a repository. And I can, uh, th this repository has a hash. It's available as a yum repository, and I can install OpenStack with it if I wanted to. And, and so there's a new current repository that's generated every time on a new commit. And all these repositories also are also kept. So I can go back in time and, and, and choose any of the previous repositories that uh, were built if need be. Um, but I as we saw earlier, um, we can have build failures. And so whenever there's a failure, we don't generate a repository because the package build failed. Um, and, and so if, if, um, if, all of the, if we have a set of packages, if, no, if there are no current build failures uh, for all of the OpenStack packages, um, we will generate a, a consistent repository. So the consistent repository is essentially the latest and the greatest of the master benches, and also that did, did not have any build failures. And so this is the repository that is targeted by the CI of RDO. So we have CI at RDO, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and so when the RDO CI tests this repository uh, successfully, we do a promotion to current past CI. And current past CI is, um, is the latest and greatest of OpenStack, and we, we have it right now, we have Mitaka and current past CI that, it, that was tested successfully through a batch of tests, te Tempest, integration testing, and everything. Um, and so, um, upstream projects like Puppet OpenStack and um, um, Triple O, they use this kind of repository like current past CI to test their things in the, throughout the Miteka cycle as well. Uh, we have stable releases, so like Liberty, for instance, that was released a couple of months ago. Um, those are packaged from uh, tarballs that are released by OpenStack when there's a stable release. So we benefit from the, 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 the work that we, done, that, that we have done throughout the whole cycle. So we just package them with the specs files that we have, and we do some sanity testing. So why are we keeping up with Trunk, right? It's painful. It breaks all the time. And in fact, part of my job is fixing bro broken things. Um, it's because we want to release early and quickly, right? So Mitaka releases in April, I believe. Uh, you guys don't want to test Mitaka in, I don't know, July, right? So uh, we need to be able to release it quickly. And not only for the end users, but also for the installers. So we have installers that are able to install OpenStack using RDO packages. And so we don't want to delay these guys into also doing their stable releases. Um, and, and they have their own CI as well. And so they don't know they're broken until we provide them the, 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 the trunk packages. Um, as of now, throughout the Miteka cycle, uh, there's already over uh, 1,000 source and binary packages that are provided. So not just like Nova or Keystone, but also all of, all of, all of the client packages or also all, all of their dependencies like uh, Python requests or Python pretty table, things like that. Uh, DeLorean currently builds up to 100 trunk commits. So uh, there's more than 100 commits uh, across all of the different projects every day. Um, so how do we make this work? 
Uh, Upstream uses DevStack. Um, DevStack, it's great, it worked in DevStack, but the truth is, you're not gonna go to production with DevStack. So how do we do this uh, in RDO? Uh, we use this thing that's called Weirdo. I picked the name and I'm so proud of that. <laughs> um, and so Weirdo essentially, so we have these upstream projects like Puppet OpenStack and Cola and Triple O and um, Packstack. Um, and so the, the, these projects, they already have their CI and it's running in Girit, right? We saw it earlier in Girit. So they have, they have these integration tests, but they're meant to run inside the gate. So they're trig the, these jobs, this CI is generated uh, by a patch set in Garrett. So the whole idea of, of Weirdo is to, to be able to run these jobs outside of the gate so that we can um, improve the RDO CI coverage with it. Um, so this is what a typical um, weirdo implementation looks like. It's really, really simple. Um, basically, it's, it's a set of Ansible playbooks. Um, and really, what, what weirdo is about is just um, more or less duplicating the same environment as the gate. So it's not like it, it won't use Zool or NodePool or things like that, but it, it will create a, a test VM or a test node. It will install dependencies on it. So like uh, Ruby development libraries or you know things like that. And it will also patch some assumptions because upstream projects, jo uh, CI jobs, they're meant to run in the gate. So they assume some things, they, they assume that some things are there, so we, so we need to patch some of those. And then we just run the, the tests that they provide. So upstream projects, they have something like run tests or talks to run their integration test. So we just run them as is. And then the, the job, the, the, the middle part, uh, Weirdo doesn't do anything. It just it, it executes the test, captures the result, uh, provides, the, provides the logs to troubleshoot if need be, and then it destroys the test node, just like in uh, upstream. And so uh, Weirdo is kind of important, right? Because um, so we have these upstream projects that are here, and they use current pass TI. So Weirdo is a fairly recent and young project. And before, before Weirdo was there, um, me, I would get complaints all the time because RDO packages were broken, because our coverage wasn't um, good enough. And so the idea kind of came from there. Um, and so I wanted to take these jobs that run on current past CI that I thought were, was pretty good at the time, but not good enough, apparently. So we took the jobs that run here and run them there instead. And, and that's important because we, we essentially run the same CI that they do, uh, but one step ahead. So the upstream CI, like Puppet, OpenStack, and Packstack, and Cola, they're not broken as often, or at all, actually. And, and that's because we essentially run their CI right before them. Just to wrap things up, um, you know, we use Jenkins, we don't use uh, magic or, you know, necromancy. Uh, and so, so basically, um, we, we, we target the, 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 the latest Dolorean consistent repository. We he, here, we run a batch of tests. We see the weirdo jobs here and some triple O jobs as well. Um, and if all of these return green, we do a promotion to current pass TI. Um, and, and so by doing this, whenever there, there's a stable release, we've done the work throughout the whole cycle and we're re almost ready to release. Um, that's almost it for me. Um, just wanted to do some advertising. Um, RDO is the OpenStack distribution for uh, Red Hat based distros. Um, and we have test days. And in fact, we have a test day I believe tomorrow and Thursday. So you can come hang out with us on IRC and you know, use Packstack or whatever way you want to install OpenStack with RDO, dist uh, RDO packages. And you'll have engineers like me on IRC helping people out, filing bugs, squashing bugs. So we have these community days every month. You can come and join us. Uh, the URL is there for, um, for uh, uh, documentation and stuff. And you have um, a couple of installers that are able to install from RDO packages, um, like Packstack, Triple O, 
uh, Puppet OpenStack, which is the most uh, popular way of installing OpenStack today. And you have a, a new one, uh, it's called Cola, that's based on containers. That's it for me. Thank you.